Hello everyone, my name is Saksham Dikshit and this is my channel Pantest Diary. So today we'll make another video on the same series of knowledge here and in this video itself I'll try to cover the concept and this is not a concept, this is just a general introduction related to a server rules. So what exactly the server rules uh, which normally a um, blue teamer I can say that a server administrator will have to get it configured. What are the type of things they will have to take care of it before proceeding for like if you're talking about any enterprise environment then definitely server admin will take care of the server end to end itself a lot of things maintenance and everything they will try to get it cover itself they will have to take care of the backup they have to take care of the maintenance itself the configuration and a lot of things so i'll try to cover what are the different different type of things is coming under that category as a role of the server admin itself and how the users who are utilizing the servers itself they can um, uh, our responsibility is to get it educate them so that when they're utilizing a server like especially application owners application team when they're accessing the servers they're not bit concerned about it so that was the main reason behind it i'm just making this video so that i will educate them like what are the key things they have to take care of it instead of just using blindly and doing a number of configuration and number of things which is not at all be required and which may lead compromising the server later phase it's like an example the services a lot of things so i'll give it a real time examples also along with a dis, uh, dis whatever the description we have it in our document so i'll try to get it covered and then later phase itself i'll go it further with like what actually a real time environment situation is it and how we can utilize that and how we can overcome the problem based on that so everything will try to get it covered in this video so going further with that if we talk about the introduction of the server rules what the purpose of that rule and the scope and the application itself everything is one of the thing like the term coming under the server rules it's nothing like that there is nothing like a uh, acls only i'm talking about i'm talking about the overall stuffs about it which we uh, we have to get it considered inside of that server rules so talking about the purpose of the server so clarity the object to ensure the security and the maintenance performance and establish a conducive environment for all the users that's most important so what it means like our objective of that server should be very clear about it what's our objective like if our objective like the example if 10 users are utilizing that application on which we are deploying on app uh, server itself so definitely we have to make that server in such a way not like a high-end server we have to make it so the objective it's very clear about it at the time of making that uh, uh, like when we are building any server itself so the objective should be very clear about it what actually we are looking for it with this server the scope and the application the specified which systems and the person the user apply to address any except uh, exceptions or the special rules itself so that's also like take example if if there is a uh, server which we are deploying it and uh, there is exceptions to be there itself like as per the requirement uh, what are the different different type of users outside the uh, outside the enterprise environment if a person is trying to get access to the control taking control of it that is also coming into the scope section for it when we are building a server like take example if the rtp to be get it enabled from any third party sections for it they will take a control of our server that is also one of the thing which we have to get it scope inside of the section of the scope section for it going for this is all about the introduction of the server rules going further with that if you're talking about the general general server uses rules so that's most important we having four categories of uh, in, in that section of it first is access control second is a uh, user responsibilities data and uh, information security and the last one is the resource management so i'll go with the access rules itself define who has access under what condition itself authentication required out time procedure for granting and revoking the access so what it means access control like Take example, you have built one server, you have to provide the access to the application team, um, maintenance team, network team, whatever is it, as per the thing. So the access to be very clear about it, whom we have to provide the admin rights, whom we have to provide a limited access, as per the need itself, we have to provide the access. So that's coming under the category of the rules. It's we have to define the accessibility for the user either with the SSO <coughs> or with the AD itself or a local credential we are creating it or passwordless is one of the thing which recently we are seeing it so that's also one of the possibility we can see it using the mfa so those are the things also we can utilize it but make sure that whatever the accessibility you are providing to the users or 
to the maintenance department itself make sure the access the roles should be very clear about it privilege will be very clear about it so that later phase itself there is something like at the time of the audit like when we are going for the audit itself normally what happened like when they are asking us to provide the list of the user having a privileges couple of user having a privileges as an administrator and they don't require it also as per their job they don't require it so that was the thing we just have to be very clear about it in case of access control now going further with the user responsibility so it's is correlated with that itself establish user con conduct exceptions um, for other data and resources i can say that address compliances and the legal and the organization policies itself so that's coming under that interlink with that so we should be having very clear about it with the compliance part whatever the accessibility we are providing it the responsibility should be very the responsibility should be there for the users who are utilizing that that's one of the thing which we have to take care of it going further with that if we talk about the data and the information security then in case of information security what it means like specify the rules for the data handling and the encryption the storage like this is a responsibility not only with the server side but it's a responsibility of the users also who is utilizing that server take example i'm talking not talking about the end, end point user i'm talking about the application team who are building the application on top of the server they have to be sure about it whatever the data they are putting on the server it should be encrypted it should be appropriate in place itself there should be a proper controls to be in place so that uh, at any point of time if a service get compromised their things whatever data is present on it it should not be get it compromised and your irregularity or the misconfiguration of the application will may lead to the compromising the server that's also one of the thing which we have to take care of it so data and information security is one of the thing which is most important for it when we are talking about the server rules for any server going further with the resource management so that's also one of the thing as for the need itself we have to build the server taking example if we require a more cpu we required then in that case we have to build that server on the basis of that if we require a less cpu less ram then that is accordingly we have to make it so resource management is should most important it doesn't mean like if we have required a hardly a 10 user and then in that case we are building a server of 128 gb we are building a server of um, uh, high end servers we are building only for the 10 users to get it access that no need we just have to be get it calculated how much is the consumption on the basis of that we have to define it make the resources available for us that was one of the thing going further with that server maintenance and the operation that's most important this is a backbone this is a backbone of any server administration <coughs> what i mean by that like you build the server you are the users are using it but if you are not aware about the servers what are the bigger problem may rise or for example the disk is getting over it's full it come like this is completely full um, users are not having ap appropriate um, the example i'll give it example in a practical way take example initially at the time of building the server they have utilizing only 16 gb they have allotted to the server at the time when the user is trying to use it after a year or two years itself if there is no maintenance happening the server team is not aware about it uh, what's the conflict like example if they are seeing it the consumption level on a tool then in that case they will see like uh, 16 gb we have allotted and we are seeing almost 13 to 14 gb or 13 gb is a consumption is already reached then in that case they will have definitely have to raise a concern uh, with the application team whether you required more user will have to join in future or not if they're saying yeah we, uh, the users are utilizing it this is not a peak this is not only for a certain time limit this is forever then in that case definitely they have to request they have to go for the upgradation of it the hardware and even for the ram even for the cpus they will get it upgrade as per that thing so this is happening only on the basis of the monitoring if you're doing the appropriate monitoring you know that these other things is happening on the basis of that you will try to get it upgraded going further with that monitoring and login ones like at any point of time if any any service get compromised that's also one of the thing where we are if we are monitoring it having the proper logs and in that case we can identify the root cause of it even we can detect the problem over there so if any service get compromised anything uh, against fishy activity is happening on the server itself we can get it identified very easily using the monitoring like siem such type of tools we can utilize it just to get it identify the problems and do the monitoring appropriately incident response if anything any incident happened on the server itself to solve that thing we can able to do that so that's also a part of the server team where they will take action appropriate action for example if any uh, 
unwanted services running on the server itself which is not utilized but still it's running so they will have to get it maintain the repository so that they will have to see like okay this is a service is getting assigned just for a temporary purpose but still it's open so the maintenance is that also like we just have to maintain monitor it and even unwanted stuff we have to be get it removed we just have to check with the appropriate team whether they required that thing now or not if they required it then definitely we just have to keep it with their appropriate approval in case in future aspects if anything happen with that service itself at least we have a appropriate stuffs evidence with us if we don't ask them then definitely we don't have any evidence and unfortunately the unwanted services are running on a server which may lead to compromise the server in later phase itself going further with that network and the connectivity rules so another section which you talk about the network and the connectivity rules in this two sections are coming a network access and the firewall rule you might be thinking like uh, both of things looks like same only but the network access is not at all be a only based on the firewall rules only like connectivity to be get it established with the server everything is coming under the category of the network access that's one of the thing and the firewall filtering itself like when we want it to be a restrictions to be there itself we want we don't want a full access to be uh, get it assigned to the uh use other example if any servers get it deployed and uh, if it's a linux server support 22 or any other ports to be like we might be get it exposed to the internet so just to get it restricted we don't want that to be get like if anyone is doing the anmap on the target server and our server is get exposed to the internet then that is we do not want that server to reflect the port 22 on internet then that was the reason behind it we have to go for the filtering itself we have to make a appropriate acls over there itself so that our port only port 80 if it's a web based application which depend on the server we want only port 80 or 443 should be get it reflected on internet so the user is seeing it only can identify okay this is only a window uh, this is looks like only the application get deployed and there is nothing like a person can get details about what other ports are running on that server itself so that was coming under the category of it and i'll read the content for you uh, policies for connecting the server itself like if we want to get it connected to the server itself a vpn use is a remote access protocols these thing to be the example for my home if i try to get it access the server of my organization then in that case definitely i have to use the vpn itself to get it connected with the vpn then through the vpn itself a private ip to be get it assigned to my system and through that i can take a rdp of my server itself there are another number of different ways also through which you can get it access Now talking about the security measures for the wireless and the wired connection itself like that should be get it controlled appropriately for it firewall filtering configuration rules for the firewall settings guidelines for the content filtering and the access control list itself so that's also most important like there should be a proper guidelines to be there itself for the filtering itself what we want it to be get it uh, exposed to the internet what we do not want it that to be get it make it a proper acls on the server itself like not talking about only the hardware firewall and talking about the firewall which is uh, inbuilt on a server itself so that's also one of the thing which we have to utilize it appropriately so that we can make a appropriate content filtering over there itself instead of reflecting everything and get it exposed like couple of cases we have the vulnerable services if we are not filtering that then definitely a vulnerable service to be get it exposed to internet and attacker can get the details about it okay this is the port this is the service which is running and which looks like a, a um, vulnerable service and definitely they can try exploiting that service itself and if a no one expert is able in a market that person can do that and compromise it very easily i have seen it multiple time uh, applications are running that and the person is trying to get a test or seeing that application just to enumerate a lot of things about it and then suddenly through the application itself with a misconfiguration a attacker or intruder can get it identify okay this is the service get it lies over there with an application if i try to get it exploit this service i can able to take a control of it and couple of cases that's happening and the attackers can get the full control of the servers also using that application itself so that's one of the thing we are making a appropriate controls over there itself we can solve this problem going further with that if we talk about the compliance and the legal consideration that's also most important why it's coming under the category like regularity i can say that a compliance itself this is most important for related to the privacy like when you are putting a data of a user you do not want the data to be get it leaked at any point of time no one can hack it no one can steal your data so that's our regulations we have to be get it defined appropriately for the servers we want the appropriate controls whatever that hipaa gdpr these are 
are the controls which like normally organization should be have to follow so that at any point of time if the audit will ask you like okay your servers are gdpr approved or not like it's compliant or not you can say yeah it's compliant like the thing is that whatever the data you are having it's as per that controls which is coming under the category of gdpr or hipaa itself so make sure that it should be get it control uh, your all the controls should be fulfilled and if it's not then definitely you have to work on that section to get it approved it so that at least you are on a positive side not on the negative side going further with the intellectual property is rules and regarding the licensing like if you're utilizing any software on your server then definitely it should be licensed one that is one of the most important thing never ever use any uh, unlicensed or i can say the freeware something like that on your corporate environment or on a server or even on your desktop as don't use it later phase itself if uh, that organization get an identify like okay this guy is using on a corporate environment on a corporate system that person is utilizing a unlicensed version then in that case they will uh, they will raise a concern or um, uh, it might be possibility a penalty will be like uh, uh, they will raise a penalty they will ask the organization to pay the penalty for it as your user is utilizing unlicensed version on a corporate environment that was one of the thing which we have to be take care of it we should know not even a single person user or application owner can uh, can install any unwanted software even unlicensed version whatever the need is it they can do it outside but within the organization they are not supposed to do that okay at any point of time for testing purpose in isolated environment they can do it not with the production or dev environment itself going further with the documentation and training that's most important in the context like whatever the things we can we can put any control i can say from a security professional point of view i can say we can put any control we can put multiple layer firewall like um, latest firewalls latest acls we can make it signatures we can uh, get it updated we have the dedicated signatures team also to be make that app as per the need itself but if we are not providing a training to our users then in that case it may always a vulnerable point our users are most vulnerable as compared we can secure our servers but if our user is not educated a lot then in that case definitely at some point of time your user will do that unwanted activity which may lead to compromise your server so make sure that this is one of the point and your user will always be a vulnerable point so make sure they are uh, they are educated enough they aware about it what are the what is good for the organization what what is not good for the organization and these things we can achieve it only through the training so try your best make that aware about it what are the actual controls i'm not asking you let's to just educate them what actually the configuration make that uh, generic content and just train them provide a quiz to them so that they will interact such type of thing and at any point of time if any like things have a phishing type of attack if we are not making them aware about it then definitely they will always be click on such type of email and anything can be happen so that was the reason most of the organization are going with the phishing attacks just try to check how like uh, whether the users who are using it they are aware about the things like uh, phishing type of attack or not that was the same thing we can do it for the server rules also like in case of server also such type of trainings we can build it so that we can aware them like these type of services don't try to install any unwanted software on it so these type of training we have to provide it so that's all about this stuff i just want to get it cover as a real point of view i can say that um, um, if i'll provide you my views about it so definitely server management is not a easy task this take a lot of pain uh they will have to work a lot like in couple of cases if the server goes down and it's not so easy like this nothing like a laptop where you have to unplug the um, battery and you simply have to plug it once again and you can start the uh laptop like i'm talking about the server which is remotely almost uh far away from like we are working from india itself and your server will might be in us itself it's nothing like that it's not possible for you just to restart the server go over there itself off and on not possible that was a reason couple of cases um, where we have to be travel should be aware about it what's the problem behind it travel shooting is one of the main concern about it so a lot of things over there so these are just a few points and this is not only for the server management guys they are already aware about it i just want 
others whosoever the uh, viewer they will have to know these things about it so that in future as well when they are using any application when they are deploying any application at least they are aware about it these are the core things which they have to take care of it don't rely only on the server management they are having a lot of load like they are taking care of thousand servers and it's not possible for a single person or again a team itself to manage everything that was the reason don't rely only on the server team we take action from your side make <coughs> should be aware about it before taking any action on a servers so that you can secure your organization a lot okay so take care of it i think that is the only thing i just want to share uh, in the knowledge share section for it thank you so much once again take care bye bye